All right, this is the buildup of the 05 uh, Stealth Bomber that uh, lost some piston pieces on an over rev. Um, we showed some, there's stock pistons. Yeah, we, this was the least of the damage. Number seven really came apart, but I don't have it here with me, but it uh, there's pictures of it elsewhere. Anyway, out with the old, those are all garbage, and with the new. And for what we are using, we got a kit from MMR. And these are their manly, um, manly pistons that are all been balanced. Had it bounced to stock crank. These pistons are forged uh, 2618 cast, or forgings, good, good strong stuff. And again, their manly rod here. Um, what a gay name, manly. I got manly parts in my engine. I always thought that was kind of a funny thing. Anyway, so yep, that's what we got. These to me just look like a run of the mill uh, scat type H beam cheap Chinese rod. Uh, I say cheap, but they work well. They hold good power. I use these rods in my Turbo LS that makes retard power. Anyway, they don't look anything particular, not like a Corilla rod or anything like that. But anyway, so we've got some uh, manly rods, some manly pistons. Got new mains, new rods, um, the ARP side bolts. We just are doing, we're not doing studs, we're just doing new bolts on the bottom end, on the main caps. There's all uh, my stuff cleaned up. There's main caps, water pump, all that jazz. Under here, we got a balanced crankshaft with the balance sheet. All right there. New style oil pan gasket that includes the windage tray. New uh, MLS MMR gaskets, um, head gaskets. Anyway, we're gonna make it work. We're gonna put it all back together. And uh, this thing should never, ever, ever break apart again at moderate levels. I think this setup here is probably good for 800 horsepower with those rods, pistons, um, stock crank. I don't know, maybe people do more. But anyway, it, we've only got that. Uh, that's the uh, V2, it's V2 or V3, I can't remember, but it's oiled by the engine, so it's not an oil list. But uh, I think that charge is only good for like 650. So it will, it will uh, it'll get a new light this week. And then we've also got to throw in the trans while we got it apart, some Tremec synchronizers. I've got, I lost my first gear synchronizer. So I've got all, all the synchronizers for the entire trans. So that's back here. We'll pull it down. It's a 36, it's a Tremec 3650. And we'll pull it apart and throw in a new synchronizer in first gear and we'll be good. That's it. So uh, people wonder about budget for to take a three valve. Now this is not a Coyote, but to take a three valve and you wanna put some power to it, what's it cost? Well, this kit here from MMR needs, this is the same piston they use for their two valves and other ones as well. So they put a fly cut in it. You can see that fly cut that they machine themselves in-house. It gets really thin. I mean, look how close that is. And that's how they do it. So MMR knows their stuff from what I understand in the uh, modular motor department. So I'm not gonna question it. But anyway, that being said, this uh, these pistons, with these rods uh, base price is like 1300 but then by the time they add the fly cut to it the rings and rod and main bearings that's about 1500 bucks and then I added some more stuff I had them get me the new bolts um, side bolts and do the head gaskets and the things you saw there my total of MMR with shipping was about 1900 bucks um, so that was just shy of two grand and then machine shop I spent with them to clean up the head a little bit because we had a little bit of damage on one cylinder in the head from number, uh, it's not seven, it's either four or eight. I think it's eight. Whatever, how Ford numbers are crap differently. But So I had to clean up the head a little bit and then they checked it, did a check the valves, everything were good on that. Um, they hung the block for a little bit more clearance. These want three and a half thou clearance. So standard bore, but I had them hone it right to the exact clearances they wanted on those. Um, I have the 
anyway, I spent close to 600 bucks at the machine shop getting it dialed in and I had the receipt. And I don't know if I took it with me or not. But anyway, let me see if I have it so I can show you. So I'm another 600 into that for machine work done. Oh well, can't find it. So that tells you I'm about 2,600 bucks for a forged bottom end minus a crank. If you're gonna go with the crank, you're gonna be looking at least another grand. I don't know what those cranks cost, but I imagine at least a thousand bucks. So I'm running a stock crank, forged rods, pistons, stock heads, nothing done, stock cams. So I, the lesson to be learned here is get an LS. I'd swap that thing to an LS. Say what you want, but if I were keeping it, which I'm not, um, I'm doing this for the guy who was gonna buy it and he accidentally blew it up. But if I were keeping it, I seriously would put a 5.3 in it. I really would. But anyway, that's besides the point. It's expensive to put a modular motor together, in my opinion, to handle any power. These blocks are so freaking light. I mean, I can grab it with one hand and take it out of the truck and it's like 65 pounds. This I don't know, it's retardedly light. And anyway, but yeah, these, these motors, I think they share a lot of similarities with the LS as far as the, the bottom end goes. The way the crank's bolted in, six bolt mains, there's pretty similar things. Thrust bearing's a little different on the back, but you know, side bolts, that all is kind of the same thing. The way they do the oil pump is virtually identical. Um, one thing I do like that Ford does that I wish that LS's would do is they actually, you can see they have locating pins here for their front and rear covers. And that's an exact fit. There's no fitting where on the LS, you, you put them on, you've got a little bit of walk and you need to set the oil pan and a few other things to make sure you get all that aligned up and install it, the dampener in to the seal. And anyway, I like that Ford dowels these. That's the one thing I'll give them on that, but their stuff's expensive. And I don't think it's nearly as robust. I look at these pistons, man, look at these rods. You compare this to a Gen 4 rod. These things just look puny. And they say these rods are good for 500 horse and that's really it. And I believe it. They do do a full floating rod. They're a C-clipped. They, they got a coated piston, but the pistons are shit. They're just, they're so thin. They just don't hold any, any power, in my opinion. So I think the Coyotes have come up a bit in their, their quality and strength over this, but you can make this motor live at 800 horse all day and, and maybe even a thousand horse is what we've done. I don't think that crank would break at a thousand horsepower. I don't think those rods would break at a thousand horsepower or pistons, but you're going to take a lot of boost to get this small bore motor to a thousand horse. You're going to spin it high. You're going to have to spin it high and you have to put a lot of boost on it and it will do it. I've seen it done. I know guys that have a thousand horse on a three valve motor, but it's uh, it's a big chore. Anyway, this is uh, not my preferred motor, as I've made it clear. Um, heck, that looks odd. Not my preferred motor, but it is what it is.